Hi, this is Desmond Taylor from Real Progressives. Um, the, I, the issue I really want to touch on is race relation, but the first thing I want to talk about is the debate as a whole. First of all, the debate was a sham because the fact that third parties could not be at these debates. It was very important for the third parties to be at these debates. It was very difficult to watch the debate that I wasn't going to vote for while watching the Jill Stein debate while fact-checking. And all that could have been solved by having everyone that could have been the president at this debate. The media is saying that one of these two people are going to win, and they're neglecting the fact that there's other people running, and that's just not right. But I want to get into the conversation of race relation, which was one of the subjects in... Um, in this debate, and both candidates did a horrible job of covering the the race relations. Uh, the both candidates are unqualified to be president in my eyes in the first place. So, let's talk about some of the things that they didn't talk about. The first thing they didn't talk about was changing laws that caused friction in the first place. If we were to get rid of some of the laws that caused friction in the first place, many of these problems would go away. There isn't a race relation problem that is that huge. There is a problem between the justice system and the civilians, and the media portrays it as a race problem. If you've gone to any of these protests, you will see protesters of all different races there. That's how you know that there is not a race relation problem. There is a problem of how the media portrays things to get people hyped up. This is happening with everything. This has happened with with uh with the welfare. They present it as an African American thing, and it's a high population. But if you look at statistics, it's a it's a Caucasian American thing. Doesn't matter. No, I'm only using it to point out the fact that the media is botched, and they cause the so called racism in the system. Because, like I said, if you go to any of these any of these events, you will see people of all races. But if you only watch it from TV, you're going to see just black people being rowdy and the the white reporters. It just isn't a true perspective of what's going on out there. And that's one of the things that we need to fix. So we need to fix the media, but we also need to fix the laws that cause these problems in the first place. One of the biggest ones that we can think of is marijuana. There are too many people in the in the system, the criminal system, for marijuana as a whole. So when that starts off as your first charge, and after that your charges can only stack, why would you not want to avoid the police at any means possible so you don't get in more and more trouble? If we change these laws, then there will be no struggle between civilians and police in the first place. That is very important that we do such a thing. We talk about crime rate, but the crime rate is off of these laws. If you have laws that does not match the population's morals, then you're going to have a high crime rate. There's no two ways about it. It's the only way possible. So if you have all these things that are just uh, that are just illegal because people don't agree with them in the first place, but they're set out for corporate rules, then you're going to have a high crime rate. If we took marijuana off of off of this, would the crime rate drop? I guarantee you it would. Because it's a crime that people do not agree with. We did not, they did not address the court system. The court system is a problem. The way that they treat these so-called criminals is a problem. The way that the charges or the, the, the punishment for these crimes aren't equivalent across the map is a problem. We have drug dealers in the inner city with small quantities of drugs that get so much time, but then we have the people bringing in these drugs in large quantities that get in very little trouble. So when your sentencing isn't even equal and it's there to oppress people in, in a jam-packed, dense area, then you're creating the problem yourself. That just isn't right. They didn't talk about the DOJ. Why did they not talk about the Department of Justice? They are the ones that are behind these these convictions they are the ones that could stop these brutal murders so if we don't put people in situations where these brutal murders will happen then we don't have to worry about this in the first place they talked about training ever so little but they didn't say what they were going to do with training what are they going to do with training are they going to change the roe are they going to adjust the color of law are they going to adjust the way that these people act act with citizens? Are they going to make training longer? Are they going to extend it from six months? Are they going to put Are they going to put human relations inside of this training? Those are important questions. It's easy to say we're going to change the training, but that doesn't say what you're going to do with the training. What you actually do with the training is very important. 
the fact that people don't, these police officers don't know how to deal with the mentally impaired, that is important that they learn how to, because that is a huge problem when you're killing deaf people, when you're, when you're killing people with autism, that is a huge problem. That, that, that will just, that drives me crazy because it's easy to talk about we're going to change the problem, but does it actually mean that you have a plan to change the problem? They talk about the gun rate. They talk about getting guns out of people's hands, but it's already a crime. It's already a crime to get, to get rid of, to have a gun in some of these circumstances. So how changing the law for people that can legally have guns, how will it actually affect anyone? It won't affect anyone. All it will do is take away my defense. And I want to be able to defend myself if someone illegal tries to attack me, whether that's a citizen or a police officer. Because once a citizen is attacking you, it is illegal. And once a police officer is attacking you, attacking you is illegal. And I want to be able to defend myself in both scenarios. I don't want the police officers to be the only people with a gun. It's just not logical to me because, as you can see, they are causing a problem in this so-called race relation. And there is a, a, a minute amount of race relations that I do see in my eyes, but that's because African Americans are predominantly the victims of police brutality per capita. But if we don't solve it for everyone, then we're not going to solve it for all people. So we have to solve it for all people. We get rid of police brutality as a whole. We get rid of police brutality for black people, for Hispanic people, for Chinese people, for white people, for Indian people, for all people. And that's what we must focus on. That's what we have to focus on. And these two did not talk about anything that was good. Jill Stein actually gave logical answers to the questions, and I hope you had the chance to watch the de her uh, do her portion of the debate. I hope you had the chance to see what she had to say, and I'm sure that's why our views are so low right now because we have a bunch of Jill Stein supporters that are tuning into her instead of us, and I respect that. I respect the fact that people aren't here because they're getting educated and spreading news about Jill Stein because it's very important. What I'm doing right now is talking to people that already support her, and I'm glad you're here because you're probably just going to do the research later anyway, or you have enough research and you know where you're voting, so you want to hear what we have to say, and I respect you for being here. Like Sandy said, we need to spread this knowledge to older individuals that aren't using internet, and some of the best ways is just to talk to one another. When I'm out, all I do is talk politics. I don't waste my time talking about other crap that isn't relevant because I love talking about politics. And I have the opportunity to talk with people who don't even know who Jill Stein is. And that's crazy in my eyes. And I understand that some people are talking about how bad Hillary Clinton is and it makes it seem like you're voting for Trump. And some people talk about how bad Trump is and it seems like you're voting for Hillary because they neglect the fact to talk about Jill Stein. I'm going to say it three times just for fun. Jill Stein, Jill Stein, Jill Stein. Those are the words that need to be coming out of her mouth if we want to actually promote Jill Stein. We need to talk about we need to talk about police brutality if that's the thing that we want to finish. We or we want to conquer. We can't talk about race relations. We have to talk about police brutality as a whole and we'll see the race relations go away because that's the problem. We need to talk about how the media is addressing this because that is a problem. And it's like we just don't get it. We could talk about the inner cities, but if we don't talk about them correctly, we only talk about their violence and not how they're being subjected to violence, then we're not helping. All we're doing is letting the cycle go on and on and on and pointing fingers. We need to be able to point fingers both ways. We need to be saying that people in the inner city are doing things bad and people in the system are doing things bad that create people in the inner city doing things bad. Because if we take away things like the drug laws, then we won't have a problem in the first place. The crime rate, the crime rate will not be high in the first place. We, not us, because we're good. The system creates this crime rate. So when you give me these bullshit statistics, realize that you made them up. By creating a system where we are already oppressed. And when I say we, I talk about the human species in the United States. So, please, tell your friends about Jill Stein. Please tell your friends about the actual subject, whether it's police brutality, whether it's TPP, whether it's the pipelines, no matter what it is, make sure you talk about the actual the actual problem itself and not just a protest. When you talk about just a protest, you take the information away you take the education away and we are a nation that needs to be educated on the actual subjects instead of things that are not the actual subject it is very important 
I'm going to quickly scroll down the comment feed and see if there's anyone that wants me to answer a question about race relation or see my opinion on race relation. If you have one, throw it up real quick. I'll be more than glad to answer it because it is important that we also get the perspective of all people before we just jump off and say this is a solution. The solution for me may not be the same solution for you. So we have to see how everyone feels about one thing for the solution to actually become true because we cannot just do things off of representing ourselves. We have to look at how other people feel. Let me make this quick scroll. Yes, they are. Um, Justin Williamson says, I'm a white man and even I know African Americans get treated more poorly than white Americans. And that is true. And that is true because they are they are in places that they get treated bad. They are in inner cities where education just isn't that great. They are in inner cities where police use force that just is not necessary. They are in inner cities where the relations of police officers and citizens are not great. You know what? I lived in the inner city and I lived in the sticks. And I got to tell you, the, the police officers and the sticks are nicer to you no matter what color you are because they're just more homely. When you're in an inner city, the police officers are usually not as nice. I'm not saying that all police officers are bad. I'm not saying all police officers are rude. I'm saying that when you look at police officers as a whole, when you're in the inner city, they seem to be they seem to be really really mean, and when you're in the outer city, they seem to be really nice. I'm gonna scroll up some more. Yeah, see, I, there's one thing. To, um, someone said that you shouldn't watch the TV. You should boycott the, the debates. I still want to be informed. I'm not going to vote for either two of those parties, but I still want to be informed on what's going on. I still want to know what's going on. And guess what? That's not going to make me run and post it, but I still want to have the education in my head to know what they're talking about. I still want to see what they're talking about. I want to see what they're avoiding. I want to compare that to the candidate that I will vote for, Jill Stein, and what she says. The marijuana is not the problem. People are locked up. It's the stupid city for the authority to the least are sick of people in party. Oh, yes. Um, the, you know, m marijuana is uh, not the complete problem. It was an example that I was using because um, that's those are laws that need to go away. Laws that uh, that should be used and money that should be used for drug reform and rehabilitation should not be funneled into the court system to profit off of these people or to keep them behind bars. So I understand that uh, there's uh, mentally handicapped behind behind bars and there's people that are not educated behind bars and there's no jobs created for these people and they're working for the state at a very low cost, um, which is uh, uh, which is which is just like another form of slavery. If you look at the the Thirteenth Amendment, you'll see that the word "accept" is in there. Um, so slavery is not abolished. This is just a new form of slavery to put people in jail uh, to use them for your means or to put the strongest, most intuitive people away. A lot of people that are in jail do not deserve to be in jail. It's but we need to fix that system. And I was talking about this the other night. One of the ways that we need to fix the system is by actually going to court. And this means when you're tried with one of these bullshit charges that you go and you say that you're not guilty all the way up to trial and you depend on your peers to use jury nullification and they say that they don't believe in the trial. So even if you're guilty by the letter of the law, then, you, then you're still not guilty. You do not have to vote guilty because someone broke the letter of law. You can use jury nullification to say that this person is not guilty. I do not believe in the crime in the first place. That is very important to do. Um, I'm going to see if there's one more, uh, one more problem or one more, uh, one more comment that I can answer. I like I said, I know that our views are down because people are listening into Jill, which is I, which is something that I really respect. You're getting education instead of just listening to me tell my perspective. Um, so I respect that, and I actually want to get you back to Jill Stein. I want you to see what she's saying. I want you to share that information uh, at the abundance. I want you to share this as well, but what Jill Stein is saying is a little bit more important than what I'm saying. So I would like to leave off telling you that if you're not a part of our YouTube, please become a part of our YouTube. Please subscribe. Our information in our videos go down uh, due to every post you put, every uh, a post goes down. So if you want to see if you want to see what we've done and you want to search what we've done, YouTube is the best place for that. Facebook also censor, censors us. Sandy said in her last live that someone said that Facebook is censoring. Um, you know, so check that out. You know, go to YouTube, check us out. It's very important that you do. Uh, thank you for saying I'm a good guy. And, um, I'm going to keep doing this. There was one time in my life where I stopped. 
It was probably about uh, two years after, or maybe a year and a half after I faced police brutality. I was in the military at the time. I know that the military didn't care because um, they had all the evidence in their hand that I was brutalized by the police. But they let me sit in jail for 50 days, that's 5-0, on a $10,000 straight bail while I was uh, while I was in the military. Nowhere to flee, nowhere to run, uh, you know. But So uh, th that was the one time that I quit in my life. But I will not do it again. I just will not do it again because... I feel like I have a voice that can travel pretty goddamn far. And if people were willing to listen, then that's great. And if people were willing to prove me wrong and tell me different, then I'm willing to listen to them because things cannot be based off just my perspective, even though I feel like I have the right ideas. I've gained these ideas by listening to other progressives like you. I'd like to thank you for watching, and I want everyone to have a great night. Go check out Jill Stein right now.